Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. I hope this Tuesday finds you all well. I've just been spending a lot of time decluttering and reorganising my wardrobes and got bags of bark delivered and so I thought I'd take a little break and create a card mainly because I'm shattered. <laughs> so I just thought, why not create a card? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a technique that I always do when I'm stuck for inspiration. Now I've been doing this technique for around about 27 years. Years ago when I had the shop, we, we didn't have gel presses and things like that. So we used to use our acrylic blocks for lots of different ideas, you know, sort of for... Um, reverse stamping we used to use acrylic blocks there's lots of things that we used to adapt because we hadn't got things like gel presses so we used to use acetate and things so what i'm going to do is do um the inks direct to the acrylic block and i'm using the all and create border acrylic block you can use any acrylic block that you wish so what i'm going to do is I'm using white card that is three and a half inches by eight inches. So it's just pink frog white smooth card. And what I'm going to do is just smoosh the ink across my acrylic block. Now, try not to dab it on like that because you're going to get square markings on your acrylic block. We can get rid of them because when you spray with water, you can just mix those lines up with your finger. But if you want to avoid them, then just smoosh the ink on. Just smoosh it on. And just, you're sort of sliding it across rather than pressing it on. Now, what I'm going to do, just to change it up a little bit, is I'm going to take some infusions. Now, what I could do is I could add the infusions direct to this acrylic block and then I could spritz it with water and the colour would actually be darker. And I've actually done one of those and I will show you. So that's if you take the infusions and I'm using Sunset Beach. Now, if you took the infusions and added them direct to your acrylic block and then spritz with water, it's going to be a lot darker and a lot richer because those crystals are directly on the acrylic block and you need to spritz them with water so you're getting a more intensity of colour. What I've done here is I've added the infusions here to my... Now, because those have been standing quite a while, there's a lot of walnuts. The walnut crystals have activated. So I'm just going to add some more, just so I get some of that pink. So I've activated the um, infusions that have got walnut crystals in them. What I'm going to do is take off the excess and then I'm going to dab those infusions just on to my acrylic block. Just dab those infusions on there. We'll just move this out of the way. Just to add a little bit more colour, a little bit, just to make it a little bit different. Just to add a little bit more colour to our acrylic block. And what we're going to do then is just spritz with water. So we're then going to take this to our card. Let's turn it to the side because it makes it a little bit easier. And then we're just going to press that down and it sucks into the card. Can you see it's moving? It's actually moving. Now, I don't want it to cover the whole card. So I'm going to lift that up so I've got some of the white areas as well and what i like is i like the fact that you get some white areas and it differs every time depending how much water you add etc also if we get a spare piece of card oops if we get a spare piece of card and we just place this onto the spare piece of card you'll then get a second print that you can then cut to size and use for another print and you get another beautiful print you can probably get a third generation print from this now it's always better if you can actually let these dry naturally mainly because you get more intensity of color 
So if I use the heat tool, so can you see here, you've got these darker areas here. If I let that dry naturally, it's floating on the top. So then when it dries layer by layer, this dark area remains. If I use a heat tool, you'll get some darkness, but not as intense as if you let it dry naturally. So that's our first print. And this is our second print. And the second generation print is just as good as the first. Now, what I did, I did one print by apl applying the infusions directly to the acrylic block and then spritzing. And that's how much darker it is. It makes it a lot darker. So you get all these backgrounds if you experiment in the way you apply the crystals, whether you use brush -os, infusions or whatever. Now, this is the first print I did before I went live to the video, just so that this could dry a little bit and you could see the intensity of the darkness. But I only did it about two minutes ago, but it's just so that you can see that. So what we're going to do is we'll put all these backgrounds to one side. So now I've got several backgrounds I can use. And here's another one that I did with the second generation print. You can see that that's the second generation. So just so that, you know, you could have like a session where you just create these backgrounds and you don't do anything else, you just create the backgrounds, then you think about the focal image afterwards. Now, what I want to do is I want to give this card a little bit of a dry now, mainly because I need to carry on with the card. You can let yours dry naturally and do your card in stages. So I have allowed that card to rest a little bit so that you can see the darkness of that patch and so you can understand why letting it dry naturally is always best but I'm drying it because I'm doing it for video purposes because I'm doing the video I need it to be dry so that I can stamp so just give this a dry And it's surprising how much darker it is because I've allowed that to settle on the card naturally for a few minutes. Always dry the card from the back as well. Just so those fibres are getting dried from both directions, not just one direction. Let's just use a bit of that kitchen roll. And it's up to you when you do when you're using the acrylic block you can actually tip some of the moisture off if you want and then you'll even get more white patches it's entirely up to you how you adapt the technique and adapt the technique to make it a little bit different for your card so each time you do this as well it's always going to look different now start the next stage of our card now just bend your card a little bit as if you're training it just to go back those fibers have been stretched and bent with all the water just train them back into shape a little bit just so it lies a little bit flatter right what I'm going to do now I can't pick my card up I'm going to use this stamp set which is elements of nature and I'm going to use, which you can't see because the label's there, Tracy. I'm going to use this background stamp here. Sorry about the glare. So I'm going to use this background stamp and I'm going to use my black nocturne ink. I can always, I always look at my black nocturne ink and I always write the date on the back just so I know how long I've been using it. Because for me, I mean, I stamp many many times per week so my versifying clairs get a lot of abuse so they do you do need to add a date just to keep a check on them so that's what i do and what i also do is if i'm if i'm 
demonstrating, sometimes I'll leave my ink pad upside down just to prolong the life of the ink pad. Right, I'm going to ink that stamp and I'm going to give it a good, good inking. I'm not going to rush this process. I'm giving it a good inking. But don't stress too much if it's not perfect because we can always do something about it. I don't think that's sticking down on the acrylic block very well. So what I'm going to do is start here towards the top of my project. And what I want to do is show how you can extend your stamps, how you don't have to keep them the size that they've been designed. You can, you can alter them a little bit. You can make them look a little bit different to how they've been designed. But the way they've been designed is so they can be extended. That's the whole point of them. And I'm just using the All and Create acrylic block just so that I can, I've got good even pressure, just so that you can see that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend that design. Now you could use this without an acrylic block quite easily, no problem at all. But I'm using the acrylic block because it just allows me just to have that flex. But don't worry, don't always panic if you haven't got perfection instantaneously. We can always sort of develop that. So because you can see through the acrylic block, you can see where the circles can overlap. So if the circles overlap slightly, it looks like the stamp has been extended or it looks like it's one whole stamp rather than just one smaller stamp. You can see that I turn the card every now and then just so it's easier for me to flex that acrylic block. If you prefer to work on the side like this and then you can flex it this way, like this, everybody's different. So just work with what works for you. I have to turn my card sometimes just to check that I've got the area in the right area. So I'm bringing down, I'm extending this stamp set now. And if your card, your card's going to have a little bit of moisture on it. So if you've got a few areas that are slightly paler than others, don't stress about that because this is a background that we're going to develop, that we're going to extend and just make a little bit more interesting. So don't stress, this is going to be the background element. So let's extend this a little bit this way. So we're just making it so it definitely connects. If it definitely connects, then it looks that like that stamp is meant to extend. It looks like it's that one, one stamp set. So we're just making sure that that can extend. There we go. Let's just wipe up our bit of mess. So what we've got now is we've got the makings of our background and it just looks beautiful. What you need now is a spare piece of card. So I'm still working on the pink, pink frog card. And what I want to do now is add a bit more vibrancy of colour. So I want to highlight a little bit further some of those circles. And I think what I'm trying to show is that even if you can only afford one stamp set, there are so many options when you're designing. There are always lots of options. So we're just going to stamp this a couple of times. Just. There we go. And just do that again, because I may need more than one circle and as I'm tapping I can hear something rattling in my craft room so if you can hear something rattling it's because I'm tapping the stamp and there's something on a cupboard that rattles just adds to all the authenticity doesn't it of the video you can always rely on Tracy you know I, I, I I'm useless with technology I really am 
um, but I just hope that I make up for it in maybe some of the ideas I come up with for the card designs, journaling or mixed media pieces. We can't all be good at everything, can we? There we go. So what I'm going to do now is grab a water brush. Let me see if I've got the white, right, not white, right water brush. Let's move this out of the way. Now let me just grab my, I've got some drawings here that are just in the way. There we go. Just grabbing my Ecoline pens. Let me just see what colours I've got. So we want a pink, don't we? Because we've used pink in the background. So we want a pink and we, we want an orange. I definitely think we want an orange. So what have we got? Let's see what I've picked up. Let's see which ones I've picked up because I've just gone by Luke. Um, so I've picked up Fuchsia and Deep Orange. I think I've done them colours before. Fuchsia and Deep Orange. Isn't it funny how you're just drawn to certain colours? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick certain circles. So first of all, I'm going to pick, I definitely want these two big circles. And depending where you cut, you might have to stamp several times, but that's absolutely fine, no problem at all. So just adding the pink, the fuchsia, I do love the Ecoline pens mainly because they're so that they're so juicy, so they're really lovely to use. So I'm just going to add a little bit of the orange. And when we do other circles, we'll do it the other way round, where we do the orange and then the pink. So we'll change it round a little bit. So we'll just and always don't do what I've just done. Go straight to your card without checking your pen. Always check your water brush is clean because it might not be clean because you've used certain colours. So just, just be aware that you need to make sure that it's clean. I've done that loads of times. I've, I've sort of gone to um, a yellow and I've got pink on the project which is not a good good idea when you're going for a certain look so just make sure that you do check that so just blending that out just so that you can see we're just blending that out now if you want to just take these lids off you can go to your pen and you can pick up that orange so that you saturate your water brush and then you can add a little bit more orange to your, to your project. So it's entirely up to you. You can go in that way and just pick it up. Or you can just add a little bit more if you wish and then just blend it out. It's entirely up to you how you add that. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut those out really what you should do is you shouldn't cut out the circles until they've dried mainly because you're trying to cut out a piece of card that's got moisture in it and it's prone to tearing if you're not careful i obviously i push my luck when i'm demonstrating but we're okay so we've got this this one and we're going to cut this one out So just be aware of that. You're obviously cutting a damp piece of card out. So it is a good idea when you're doing these things that you take your time or you could dry with a heat tool because drying with the heat tool is not going to affect this much. So we've got those two circles. So what I'm doing is I'm going to obviously mount these on here just so that you can see them a little bit more. Now, what I want to do is add some more. So I'm going to add these threes as well. So we're going to add these threes. And this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the orange first. 
it doesn't matter we've chopped that bit off there so we're going to take the orange first on this occasion on both of them we did it the other way round last time and then we're going to add a little bit of the pink so you're just alternating it a little bit and then you're just going to blend that out now if you use these eco lines on bristol smooth card that it moves even more but the, the pink frog is, is perfect enough it's just the bristol smooth it, it moves even more if you try the bristol smooth card, smooth card it is definitely worth getting a few sheets so just blend that out and then let's take a little bit of the pink and let's just add a little bit of the pink you can also scribble the pink on your non-stick craft sheet pick that up and you can add a little bit more pink this way as well so it's entirely up to you how you want to do it so you can scribble your orange as well take the orange and you can you can paint like that don't forget to leave a lighter area just so it looks a little bit lighter in the air in some of the areas as well but don't forget just to as with everything if you add layers it works a lot better so just adding some of that pink so let's I don't know why I keep putting the lids on we don't need to keep putting lids on Tracy and irritating everybody so this one we've changed this around and did the orange as the main color and the pink as the sort of edging color so we'll just add that there but this is why I like background stamps because and this is why I have them a lot in my designs because with a background stamp you can that can actually create your whole card because you can just use the background stamp and then have a sentiment and nothing else and it works brilliantly just want a little bit more pink just on on this circle so just want a little bit more pink just so it's a little bit more highlighted so I'm as you can see I'm laying these out I'm not I've not stopped them yet I'll, I'll stick them in a second so just so you can see it's going to go like this just so you can see that we're layering that up I'm just deciding you see how I'm going with the design and what I'm going to do is am I going to add yes I think I'm going to do this circle here now have I got that on my page yes I have I've got this circle here so let's actually that isn't a circle that's the twine so what we're going to do is we'll cut that number nine out like so and what you can do you could also add more color to the background as well if you wish but i want it to pop a little bit so this is going to go here but we are going to raise these a little bit yes so we've got them right so just take these off for the moment that goes there take them off so just take them off at the moment so we can just add a little bit more detail right let's just put all the lids on so we know what we're doing right what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take this background stamp here that's from follow your own path so we're going to take that one Ooh, i've already got it out i was thinking oh no i've lost my stamp that's because Tracy was super organised and she actually got it out. Sometimes I'm dangerous. So what I'm going to do is take the background stamp and I'm going to take Charming Pink Versafine Claire ink. Just see how this shows up. And we're going to add a background stamp. Again, you're creating your own background and you're making your stamps go a little bit further. So just... Oh yes, you know instantly, don't you, whether you're happy with something. 
So just part of the stamp in here. I love it when things start to come together. So I'm just adding a bit of this stamping from this background stamp going all the way down. So just take your time when you're creating. You don't have to rush. And it's very difficult sometimes to always come up with new ideas. So if you're struggling with new ideas, then maybe do a technique you've done before and adapt it in some small ways. Even if you adapt it slightly, you know, it just looks a little bit different. Or if you do a different colour scheme, then it looks different. So it's worthwhile just experimenting. So let's just wipe all this up. And I just keep plonking my stamps on one side. So just, whoops, nearly fell over then. Just so you can see. You can see that background is stamping. Now, what we've done is we've stamped onto a background that's got all those inks on. You know, the distress inks, the infusions. So what you need to do is just give that a blot. Just make sure that, you know, you're not going to smudge all those inks that you've added. And there's not much that's come off, but it's still worth blotting. So what I'm going to do now is grab some of my 3D foam. You could use your ultra thick, ultra thick gel medium. I do know what I do need though. Oh, let's move that out the way. I just want some of my sisal nest. So let's just cut some of the sisal nest. I'll cut it on my knee just because there's only so much room on, on the desk. And I'm just going to place this, no, I'm going to place this down here. And then I'm going to take my two circles that I've got. And we're going to put a little bit of 3D foam. Where's my adhesive? Let's just put some adhesive at the bottom, just so that that sticks. So just have my 3D foam onto the circle. And you know it takes me a week just to get the backing off the 3D foam. Pick up the sisal nest. Let's put a little bit of 3D foam on this one as well. There we go. So we just need a smaller piece with that 3D foam on that one. Just, oh. Of course, it slides a bit because I've added, oh, I've added the adhesive, so it will slide a bit. There we go. Patience is a virtue. Tracy doesn't have much patience. That's Tracy all over. So we can now stick that down on the number three. There we go. Very nice. Then we're going to stick another piece on here just to sandwich this sisal nest just so that it stays put, just to sandwich that. I do apologise, it takes me so long to get the backing paper off. But I am a bit of a faffy. Let's place that down there just so we capture that. And then we'll add that there. So this is a little bit higher. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So we're going to add this little bit, this number nine. So huh, this is going to be the smallest piece of... 3D foam tape that you've ever seen but I do want to raise it a bit so yes I'm going to faff I'm using the wrong scissors because they're not the adhesive will stick to them so just take that in this is when when you use the 3D foam or your 3D gel this is when it comes to life when you can see it in real life because the fact that it's got the 3D element it really does lift it and gives it some life. So let's do the same again with this piece. So 
Some of these you've on there. Like so. I hope you're enjoying the YouTube videos. I think it's a good way just to showcase different ideas, different techniques or whatever you prefer. So I need some sizal nest again. Plus I like to get it all over the floor. There we go. Let's pick that piece up as well. And this piece from here. A little bit more adhesive. And let's put that other piece on the top. Just so that that's sandwiched in between. And then grab this number three. Oh, a little bit of adhesive. Let's see if I can get this in the right place this time. That's better. And remove that. If you just give it a couple of seconds, it stops sliding around. So then it's easier for you to get the backing sheet off. go just add that plus if I add some adhesive on the top it means that the 3d foam moves it doesn't just grab hold straight away and then I can't move it if I don't get it in exactly the right place so just add that there but you've gone you've gone from a stamp set that, that's that size sorry about the glare, that's that size and you've extended the design. So just, just brilliant. Let's just move that back. So you can see that you've now extended that. And don't it look beautiful? Absolutely beautiful. Right. Let's move that out of the way and just put some of these back just so that we we've got the acrylic block for our next piece do you like how I'm being a good girl right what I thought then is that we'd add the bee from the honey bee stamp set I'm going to grab the honey bee because it's a nice size and what I can do is I can take my acetate, move this out of the way, and I can decide where I want that bee, where I want it to appear. And you can move it around. You can decide whether you want one bee, two bee. I still can't make my mind up. So we'll just stamp a couple of bees out and then we'll decide ourselves. I am struggling to pick my acrylic blocks up, I'll tell you. They just keep sliding. So we want a spare piece of card. Let's move this pink ink pad out of the way and let's stamp these little bees. I have got a smaller bee as well on an A7 stamp set, but I do like, I love the honey bee. It's just lovely. Just making sure there's plenty of ink on there. And I can't decide whether I want one or two. So if you're ever in doubt, what do we do? We do two. So just allowing that ink to sit on the card before we lift it. And the bee is actually distressed. The bee is distressed. It's, you know, we, we don't want the perfect bee. It's a little bit distressed. Mm, a bit like Tracy, really. So just stamp him again and you can still lift your A7 acrylic blocks with your small images but it's always best if you just remember to hold your two fingers down there and just allow that to absorb into the card. It's just the best way to do it just so that you get a good image. There we go. Let's move that. And let's cut these out. I've got sizal nest everywhere. You're used to that by now though. So you know I like to work with a smaller piece of card. So I don't like to work with a bulky piece of card. And I'm not leaving a white border. I'm cutting out 
as is. If you find leaving a white border makes the cutting out a little bit easier for you, then you do that. Because leaving the white border does make it easier for you. Obviously, when I'm going round the antennae, then I do leave a little bit of white, just so it's easier to cut out. It just makes it far easier. And when it's on your background piece, it all works nicely anyway. So just cut these bees out. Now, I could have had the bees already cut out, but I tend to do most things in, you know, in real time, uh, rather than edit everything within an inch of its life. You know, I just show you who I am in real life. Uh, and if there's mistakes, warts and all, you get the mistakes, warts and all, just so that you see that I'm natural and I make mistakes too. And what I do to correct those mistakes is important because it's not always about making a perfect piece of art. Sometimes it's showing what doesn't work as well because when you make mistakes, you actually learn from those mistakes. And that's how you better. That's how you get better at whatever you're doing. It doesn't matter what field you're working in, whatever expertise you're in, you can only get better by learning from your mistakes. And trust me, I make plenty of them. So just cut that out. So we've just got a couple of bees to cut out. There we go. So there's one lovely size B. You see, and I'm just deciding whether I want one or two, and I just can't make my mind up at the moment. So we'll just we'll see. I think it's going to be two, but I don't know. It's not until I lay them out. Yes, you could say, well, can't you tell by placing that B further up? Sometimes I can't actually tell unless I've got the two pieces that I'm working with in my hand and I can actually move them around. You, you know, like you would anything if you were moving furniture around. I treat this no differently. It's, it's like moving furniture around. You move it around just so that you can judge where you like something. And obviously your eye will see something different than my eye does. So different things will appeal to you like it does when you decorate your lounge. Different things appeal to you than maybe would appeal to me. It doesn't mean it's right or wrong. It just means that something aesthetically appeals to you in one way and it appeals to me in a different way. It doesn't mean it's wrong. So, and as long as you've enjoyed that process, well, as far as I'm concerned, that's all that matters. So we'll just cut that out. There we go, cut his little legs out. And again, I'm always turning the card because I find it easier if I turn the card rather than my scissors to cut out, I find it a lot easier. Again, all, all personal, personal preference. But if we just share these little tips, it makes it easier for everybody and then we all enjoy our hobby. I know some of you don't like cutting out. I mean, I love cutting out, but for me, I think I like the cutting out so much because I appreciate the end result. Also, what you could do is you could tape that back up just here with some your washi tape and then you've got a stencil and then you can brush, brush through with inks and you've got a stencil. So again, your stamp's going even further. So... You see, I like the two. Just let me let me look at that in. Let me just remove that. Nope. Let me just put that back. No, I like the one. You see, it's not until you do the project that you realise. And the reason I like the one is because I'm also going to add wording as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these wings off here to 3D the B. So let's add that down. Now, if you wanted, you can also 3D the B. So let's put some 3D foam tape. Let's put some adhesive because you don't want this foam tape to dry out 
and then fall off the card. So I'm just adding a bit of adhesive. So just add a bit there, a little bit more. So I'm just adding thin, thin pieces of the 3D foam just to just to lift the bee a little bit, just to give it some depth. Again, you can use your 3D, your ultra thick gel. I can't get my words out. I'm trying to get foam and gel and everything all out at the same time. So you can use your 3D, your 3D foam or your ultra thick gel medium. There you go. I got it out in the end. Just took me a while. And you know what I'm like. Quite a few things take me a while. Like getting the backing off the 3D foam. And this is why when I've demoed on the TV, I know more, more often than not have the 3D foam all ready. Just so that you're not waiting for me to faff. Because as you know, Tracy Evans can faff for England. But that's part of who I am, really. I am a faffy. I faff in the garden. I faff with everything. So I'm just going to add a little bit of adhesive just to my bee. Just so that foam stays put. If you if you can't, you can't afford 3D foam, what you can do is use some old Amazon cardboard boxes. Cut little strips up, adhere them, and that will give you the 3D element. So just add those there. Just hold it down a little bit because you've added that adhesive. Just so that you can see. And he is actually a little bit 3D'd as well. And what we'll do is we'll cut these wings out now from the second one. And we're going to add these wings. You could even add the bee on top if you wanted the bee's body to also be 3D. Oh, on, not on mine though, because I've, I've cut his leg off. Poor thing. Right, let's add some 3D foam to these wings. So just adding a strip of 3D foam to the wings. Where does the time go when you're doing these cards? You just go in a little world of your own and then you forget the time. And I suppose that's the one good thing about hobbies, isn't it? It does while away so many hours and before you know it, half a day's gone. Let me just... So just bend the wing a little bit as well. There we go. Stick that on there. Oh, come on. I should use a pokey tool, really, but I still end up faffing with them and all. Right. Let's bend that wing a little bit. So it's just got a little bit more, more life. There we go. Let's just bend that a little bit. There we go. Just so the bee has got a little bit more of a 3D element. So what I'm going to do then is on the bee stamp set, You've got this um, like chicken wire element. What I'm going to do is in the chicken wire, wire, wire element, you try saying that. In the chicken wire element, there's some words. So we've got fly. So we can add that fly word. It's got some of the chicken wire. So there's fly. And then there's the word B that's also in the chicken wire as well. The word 
B. There we go. And that's a lovely stamp. If you use that as a background stamp, the, the chicken wire, and then add the B on top, that looks lovely. Just use my bigger scissors just to cut these out. Just find it a little bit easier to cut out. Just make that card a little bit thinner. It's better. Just get rid of these bits because they're just getting in my way. And the word B. And this is why I didn't add the other B, mainly because I'm putting this wording and I didn't want it to look too cluttered. I like lots of layers, but there's a difference between layers and looking cluttered. I didn't want it to look cluttered. So we can put fly here and we can put B here because that balances it out. So that's why I'm oh, I just chucked my lid across the floor. Hilarious. Just chucked it across the floor then. Not doing very well with that lid. Should just add the word fly here. Just tucked in. Just take a couple of seconds for that to just grab hold. And then the word B, which balances it out. Just make sure that's straight. Just to balance that out a little bit. There we go. And then let's just do some finishing touches. So we're going to add some ink tense pencil which is China ink, um, Chinese ink, I think it's called, out of the ink tense pencils anyway. Just going to add some of that ink tense pencil just around the edges. And then we'll just blend that out. I tend to use one water brush that it's, that's for my ink tense pencil just because then I remember that's the grey and I don't have to worry that it's got that really dark, dark grey on there. And I never seem to use this water brush for anything apart from that, apart from blending the ink tense pencil, the grey. But this is a very old water brush. That's why I keep it, I think, for it because, you know, it's, it's very, very well used. Definitely say I get my use out of some of the products. There we go. So just wipe that. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, let's move this out of the way. I'm just going to bring that text stamp back in a minute. I just want to bring it in a little bit, a little bit. But I want to do it with a little bit of the black ink. So I'm going to use that same tax stamp that we used in the background with the pink ink. And I just want to bring a little bit of the black text. Just to echo that black stamping in the background that we did with the background stamp. Just want to bring a little bit of the black in. And you don't always have to stamp that way. You can stamp going upwards as well. It's entirely up to you each time what you do. So let's just do one more. I'm always looking at the balance every time I'm stamping. So just so that you can see just what we've got. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the 2HB pencil. So a 2HB pencil. And I just want a paper stump. And what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of shading 
to my wings just a little bit so I'm just using a 2HB pencil just coloring really dark at the edge and then what I'm going to do is just use my paper stump and just blend that out you can use charcoal pencil you can use your pastel pencils whatever you want but I'm just going to blend that out just to give a little bit of shading. I will lift that up for you. Just so you can see, there's a little bit of shading on there. All important for me, just going to add some white splatters. Again, the white splatters add something for me personally. So just wipe this up. And what I'm going to do is take one of these numbers, so this number three. I'm just going to cut this out. It's just little touches, just little touches, so I'm just cutting the number three out. I'm just going to add the number three just here. Do I want it just there actually? No, I want it where I've just. Just there, just another. And of course, where I decide to add the number three, there's a piece of sisal nest. Of course there is, of course there is. Just make sure, so I've just added the number three here, just to highlight a few more of the numbers, just because I wanted that. And what I'm going to do is now add that to a black mat. Don't forget if your um, desk isn't clean and tidy, just remember to get a piece of copier paper. I cleaned my desk. But if, you, if your desk isn't very clean, just get a piece of copy of paper to just add your mat and layers. And I'm just standing above it because it just works a little bit better for me if I'm standing above that card. I can actually see a little bit better. And what happens is this card will try and lift away from the black mat that's because of the moisture that you've had you've added in that card so just give it a few minutes just press your card against that black layer i mean look at that just love it and it's not until you put it on your white layer that everything starts to starts to sing Again, standing above that card, just so I can see where I'm adding that mat. And it does, it just takes a few moments just to add them mats. Just take your time. And that is your card done. Let me turn it that way just so you can see the detail. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love that card. And what I've hopefully shown you is how you can extend your stamps, use your techniques and extend them, and also mix and match your stamp sets. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I will see you very soon, and I hope you enjoyed the rest of the week. Love to all, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Bye, everybody.